Okay, so I'll, I'll call, a, call a meeting to order. And uh, my name is Mike Jager. Um, I am the technology, Ad Hoc Technology Committee Chair. This is our uh, normal week, uh, biweekly meeting. Um, and uh, tonight um, we have uh, David R. Chris, Ed, uh, Ed's coming, I think. And um, we have three members not yet here. And we're expecting a couple, possibly. Uh, I'm going to bring up the uh, minutes from our last meeting. We can take a look at those real fast. That's okay with everybody. So can everyone see this? Yep. All right, so um we talked about uh the announcements that Megan is now holding in her hand. Um so we approved minutes from last time. We talked about the committee reports. David was going to go out and get uh a revised quote. Um, we still need money for CARES laptops. We talked about grants. Um, there's some dates there. These are all my notes, by the way. So if anyone wants to um, look at their stuff and then let me know if I'm missing anything at this point, um, that'd be good. Mm -hmm. Just, just one thing right there, Mike. Um, there is no deadline on the ARPA grants per se. That's money that the town has already received for the big broadband and other infrastructure kinds of issues. That deadline is probably for the community IT grant. Okay, thank you. Uh, oops, that's not the clipboard I want. All right, I'll fix that. 15th. All right. And we talked about possible uses for that money. Ed had some ideas that he was kicking around. Um, and as the committee, you know, we're here to support really whatever projects the town feels uh, is most warranted, you know. So we're going to have to, I guess, wait to hear from Ed and uh, folks about where they think they want those projects to pick up. Uh, we did talk about the Civic Plus website. Um, we asked Ed for some analytics. Um, and we also made a note that uh, we need some money for this project. And then Dan was asking for Ed um, for some info on the Bluehost uh, issues with the domains that are getting blacklisted, if that's the right term I'm using. Uh, did we adjourn at 1945? Because I don't really know how to look at the uh, recording yet. Anyone know? It's around there. Sounds about right. <laughs> All right. Any other changes to the minutes? We can get these approved and start working on business tonight. All right. Hearing no changes, I'll ask for a motion to approve these minutes. So moved. Anyone second the motion? Second that. Thank you. Um, anyone going to vote no against approving the minutes? Okay, we're going to say the minutes from the last meeting are approved. And let's move on to um, our new business. Let me stop sharing here. I don't really have, um, I didn't get any like specific in, uh, new agenda items from anyone over the last uh, 
two weeks. So I figured we could use this meeting to talk about the action items people ran off with last time. We had quite a few. So um, I'm happy to um, start off with uh, any of the committee reports that we have, the subcommittee reports. So I guess we'll start with David. He's got a bunch of stuff going on. No worries at all. Um, so I did bring back some of the uh, follow-up questions we had for Chris at Valley Communications, um, you know, just on the deployment as a whole, if we were to move forward, kind of what that looks like. Um, we did request the updated quotes from them uh, to dial it back from 60 months or wherever they were at to 36. Um, so he has done that. They had, we removed the transfer station because we determined with no internet, white phones might as well go in the dumpster with everything else. Um, and uh, removed the conference room phone, which was kind of a win-win because they actually offered us a free one um, direct from, from Bali. Um, so that's pulled off of there. So I had sent that out uh, for everyone else to take a look at. Uh, I'd be happy to bring that up if we want to put our eyes on it as a group. Um, sure. Or if there's anybody who's already looked at it and wants to uh, comment, um, that's fine as well. Let me see where this is for the last email list. Nope. Normally I would do this, but I'm without a personal computer and now I'm working off my work laptop and I don't have access to Gmail. So sorry, David. No problem at all. I'm just downloading the PDFs and then I'll uh, pull them up so we can look at them side by side. Actually, these are different. All right. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Okay. So uh, I believe the first one is the upfront purchase. Um, so it's got your non-recurring costs at just over 2K uh, for all the handsets and everything involved there. Um, just, I guess, high level comparing that next to uh, the leased option. So the leased option uh, removes that $2,000 up front, uh, but the MRC is going to go from uh, 228 um, let's see, to 290-64. Uh, so that would be spread out month over month. Um, obviously, that's a significant cost savings to, to where we're at now with um, Verizon, from my understanding. Um, so I think that's kind of a win-win as well. Um, and is within that three, 36 months. Um, so I believe that kind of meets the requirements or doesn't uh, break a threshold where that really needs to be a much larger conversation. So any concerns, comments, just high level, or do we want to really dig into the, um, the details of each of these quotes? <laughs> I think that's a good plan. It's yeah. the best one so far. Yeah. It's excellent. Yeah. I mean, honestly, that's that's great pricing from what I've seen. I've seen like one company that does it cheaper, but to work, especially with somebody that is local, can send somebody out, work with us on, you know, training and everything like that is is a huge benefit. So, and I'd love to you know, keep keep money in Massachusetts if we can. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, you can, you can tell that they have the, um, transfer station is gone, uh, on that one, same thing over there. Uh, I just want to double check, make sure that that handset, the, um, 
conference room phone is out as well. Mm -hmm. um, Megan, question for you, because I'm seeing wireless handsets and everything in here. Um, was that expected? I, that that portion, maybe that's an ad question from, you know, what had originally been quoted. I just didn't know if there was a understanding of, of those grand stream phones, whether that is, is truly necessary. Yeah, I think that was new. Let me just get uh, Kim's original up. I just don't remember seeing that before. Yeah, I don't either. How long is this quote good for, David? Oh, that's a good question. I think it's until, oh no, it's it. Um, uh, well, that's the due date. I think yeah. saying that's the due date for deployment if we did move forward. So scroll down just a little bit. Maybe it's. The wireless was quoted. Oh, there you screen. go. Sorry, right there, right? Yep. 9 2. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Oh, good. Hey, Ed's on by phone, I think. Yes, I am. Hey, Ed. Okay. So that means you can't hey. see anything, right? But you can hear us. Uh, I've been told that I don't see anything many times. <laughs> no, but you can't see the screen, or can you? No, I can't. Okay. So maybe, David, you could just recap this so that... Yeah, yeah. No, no problem at all. So, so... Ed, as we had discussed, um, I think last time we met, we made a couple quick adjustments to the, uh, requested a couple quick adjustments to um, the quote from Valley uh, for the TPX system. Uh, it was the change in terms from um, from 60 months to 36. We removed the transfer station phone, and we had already talked about removing the conference room phone because of the high cost. Um, but that yeah. is, as I believe I mentioned in the email, that is going to be provided for free at no cost for uh, from Valley. Um, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the other thing that they indicated was, you know, it, you could look at about 30 days from signature to. The, deployment as long as everything goes smoothly um i never bank on that but um i have seen it done before <laughs> yep. um i think there's no reason we would want to rush it but we want to make sure that it's done properly and it's a clean cut over um sure make sure that that works so bottom line here um for the purchased option um if we were going to buy all the phones up front you're looking at uh two thousand fifty four dollars in non-recurring uh, and then the recurring cost um, month over month would be two twenty eight twenty six um, for the you know least or uh, you know install payment option. There, there's obviously no upfront cost, uh, but it adds about sixty two dollars uh, to the recurring, uh, which brings us to two two hundred and ninety dollars and sixty four cents month over month. So. Okay. All right, and, and how many phones was that? Refresh my memory. Um, so that was the, and that was removing the transfer station. Uh, so we are looking. Uh, it was nineteen originally. Nineteen originally. Um, eighteen. Yeah. Okay, so the eighteen. Yeah. Uh, that portion's a little, so they've got a couple different phone options in here. And we, one question that popped up right before you came on, uh, it looked like there were some uh, cordless phones, at least one yeah. cordless phone that was in there. Um, is that for a specific location? I don't know. I don't ever, I don't ever remember talking about a cordless phone way back in the beginning, Okay. you know, year, year and a half or two ago with them. So. Okay. So I would say, you know, that we would want to do our due diligence, kind of circle back, make sure we know one for one where all the phones are going. Um, the yep. VVX phones, those polycoms, those are great phones. Um, and if it's just sitting on somebody's desk, I would absolutely go with that over a grand stream phone. But, you know, if there is a need for a, a, a cordless, you know, that somebody moves around with, um, yeah. nothing wrong with the grand streams by any means. Okay. On the or the quote unquote original one that we were working on, uh, the Grand Stream Wireless was on there for the Highway Department garage. 
That makes sense. Gotcha. So this looks like town hall. Um, and it looks like 15, uh, 15 phones total. Uh, 14 of which are the 250s, which are the pretty basic model. And then the 450s got a couple more bells and or whistles. Um, and then the highway department looks like three. Um, and that includes the Grand Stream. So that must have been scoped out for uh, for them having a wireless or cordless phone. Okay. So that's probably an easy question just to go back to them and just say, hey, we're revisiting this quote. Is this still within your needs? Is this how they operate now? This is how they want to operate. Yeah. Yeah, so the question yeah. is, do they need a wireless handset or can they just get a normal kit and use a Bluetooth or, you know, like a headset like normal people use, like plug it into their phone? Sounds like they need to walk around out into the garage with it. That's what I would guess that they would want to be able to look at VIN numbers and all sorts of stuff while they got the phone in their hand. But we need to Might verify be. that to David's point. Yeah, yeah I, can, I can follow up on that. Doesn't look like a significant change in cost because you're looking at a wireless base for 72, um, and then the actual handset for $69 uh, versus uh, yeah, 129 for the basic PBX. So not not a big cost cost difference either way. So it really, I think we base that on you know what their needs are. Okay. And um, so Ed, this quote is only good until September second, apparently. Right, David. Yeah. So so he must have sent this. Let me see when he sent it. So he sent it on the fourth. So they must have put. 30 days on it and he reviewed it and maybe it sat in an inbox for a day or so. Um, I, again, I've got a great relationship with Chris, you know, if we need to extend that just so he understands, Hey, this is not as easy as somebody saying, yeah, okay, let's do it. Um, you know, we've got to make sure that budgets are aligned and everything like that. If we need to extend that, I'm sure he has no problem doing that. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, any other questions related to this or ideas, thoughts on next steps here? Just on, on budget stuff, Ed, do we have funds in the budget that we could act on this now with the money that we put in for this year? It, it would depend on how, how, how long it would take us to start cutting back on the Verizon lines. Uh, for the recurring costs, uh, number one. Number two is uh, we still need to answer the question of whether we should or need to upgrade our charter spectrum uh, internet to the next tier, uh, or if David thinks we can operate off of what we have uh, once that uh, router was rebooted and the speeds came up a bit. It's a good um, segue. Yeah, and that's kind of in the back of my mind. Um, I feel like it was a good jump in speeds. Um, in term, Once we re rebooted the router, I think we went from 60-something megs to a little over 100. Yep. That was with nobody in the building. Well, wow. <laughs> um, mm. my, my thought is anything that we can do within a reasonable budget to give us more overhead, I would absolutely do. Um, I, I would make that part of the plan um, if, if we're being honest. Um, I think the other thing, um, Ed, that I think you and I talked about um, when maybe when I was on site there was just um, seeing if we can go back to 
the spectrum and say, see if they can give us a bandwidth utilization report on that circuit. Yeah. Sometime. For 30 days. Yeah, for 30 days, just so we can see kind of the peaks and valleys across, you know, the, the work day throughout the week and stuff like that and understand, do we ever come anywhere near that, that top? Because if we yeah. do, you're going to have problems when that happens. Um, gotcha. So, and, and full, you know, I guess thinking forward, they may need to flip a switch to start gathering that information. Um, so it's not like they, they may not have 30 days historical just sitting around for us to consume. They may need to turn okay. that and we may need to say, okay, in two weeks, can you give us a report? Um, okay. So I think that could be a that could be a good takeaway for something, um, you know, to, to ask them what it will take to get those those utilization reports. Okay, I'll carve out some time tomorrow and reach out to them. Okay, awesome. I mean, fingers crossed. They might have it. You know, they're sitting there saying, "I was waiting for you to ask for this," but <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? If they don't, it'd be good to set up the window that we know what the window is and we can hammer on it pretty good during that window. Yep. True. All right. Um, anything else on this on this topic? Um, on the pricing after the thirty and six months, it obviously drops down to the two twenty eight, right? That's a great question. I would have to assume so, but I don't want to assume. Like uh, we're locked in at the 228, in other words. It's a good question. Um, I can uh, I can certainly go back to him and ask that. Uh, I'm just kind of looking at the, the T's and C's here. Megan, is your question locked in for the, each year for the, the same rate over the 36 months? Um, well, yeah, that during the 36 months, but I meant afterwards when the, uh, the installment payments drop off, are we going to still pay 228 or is it, you know, going to increase obviously with, you know, technology changes, it probably will increase. Um, but I'd just be curious and in three years, we don't know where our budget will be either. So maybe it's a moot point at this point. And what are you expecting to drop off of that cost? Uh, the sixty-two thirty-eight, which is the um, install payments uh, for over thirty-six months for gotcha. the equipment. So you know, on that thirty-seventh month, we should only be paying two twenty-eight a month theoretically. That's a okay. great. Okay. So that would be in a non-purchase of the phones option. Or is that just Correct. for the installation of the phones? That's the lease piece, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Great job on this, everybody. Um, I think it's really uh we have we have some more discovery to do, but we're super close on this, I think, and I think the town's ready to take take this over pretty soon. Awesome, yeah, I'd love to see this uh, move forward if possible. So, what I've written down for action items on this guy is um, Ed's going to confirm if the highway department really needs that cordless phone or not. Which is, if they need it, it's fine; it's not a problem. We just want to make sure. And secondly, um, we're going to ask Spectrum for a 30-day bandwidth report to see where we're at. Um, if if they have they don't have it, we're going to ask for that to be set up so that we can get it, and it'll obviously take us 30 days. So hopefully they'll have it, or else we're 30 days out from anything, right? Because we need to set this up, watch it for 30 days, and see what's going on. Well, honestly, I think for our purposes, if we can do week, maybe. I'd say two just for so we're not seeing an anomaly. I mean, they should mesh up pretty pretty closely, you know, based on user okay. schedules. Uh, but uh, yeah, minimum of of fourteen days would be good. Um, one other thing I want to throw out there, just so it stays on our radar, um, and it's a question that I asked to. 
Chris at one point was um, about the firewall that's there, that Sonic Wall TZ400. Um, if that can, uh, you know, do QoS, um, you know, if it can be configured for, for QoS so it protects the voice traffic, you know, at least segments off a, a small width of the band, uh, a small amount of the bandwidth uh, just for voice traffic, which it should be very minimal, but we just, we need it to be, uh, you know, within guardrails there. Um, so, you know, that might be something, I don't know if we want to go back to whoever initially installed that TZ400. Um, I can certainly poke around on the internet. I just don't know, you know, the specifics. Um, and if there's additional license costs, we need to consider there. Um, I will oh, say- I can, find, I can find out on that. Okay, wonderful, yeah. Uh, and if you need more details in terms of what to um, ask, just just let me know, I'll be happy to, or if you want to loop me into that conversation, uh, I'd be happy okay. to, um, to, to hop in there. Um, I, I will say if that Sonic wall can do uh, QoS, I, I don't want to let the bandwidth upgrade be a blocker for this. If we can do QoS, I'm fine with, with keeping the current speeds as long as we have protected um, voice traffic. Um, I would much rather see you know, a, a much higher ceiling, um, you know, going to 200 megs or whatever it may be. And, and what is QoS? A quality of service. Okay. It's just prioritization of uh, the voice packets over anything else. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So I, I made that as a question. Will the firewall handle quality service with voice over IP traffic. Uh, Ed will find out and bring David into conversation. Perfect. All right, uh, great. This is all good, really good, really good stuff here. Anything Anything else on this particular topic for uh, Chris or Ed, you guys have, you do you have anything you need for, from us to get this going? No, I think, once we can answer that uh, question on the internet speeds, I think we've got, we'll have everything we need to see how to make this happen. All right. <clears throat> okay. So um, I guess we'll jump off this topic and move to, um, is there any updates on the remaining CARES Act laptops? No, David sent me the information I was looking for. I edited it a little bit, added some of my own, and sent that off to Wally a couple days ago. I know Pat was out of the office there, but just waiting for a response. And I did CC David on it. I don't. Did you get a copy of my CC, Dave? I, I did. Um, and yes, thank you for for pulling that together. I think that really just covers everything that we've been discussing here. And um, I, I'm very curious to see what they send back in terms of a response. Yeah, and, and bet between what you had sent me and my stuff, I, I just, I tried to kind of turn it into to bullet points that, you know, could be checked off. So I hope I did a decent job with that. No, I think you, I think you did a great job. So thank you for that. So what you guys sent to the vendor was what the remaining work that needs to be done. You're asking for a quote or something. Is that what that was? Didn't really ask for a quote. Asked basically for uh, them to identify two days to uh, install the laptop because that's the bet from what they've done already. That's the best guess uh, that I can see that I think they should be able to do it in. Um, all right, thank you. I mean, I mean worst, worst case scenario, there's probably a couple that I wouldn't mind if they didn't install and we had our own people install, but to do that, we still need uh, Wally to set up the client for the Microsoft 365 license. Right. Uh, and you think they can do how many in two days? I, I would think as long as they don't run into any issues and have everything lined up, 
I think they should be able to do four a day. Okay, great. Yeah, and we, we called out in that um, email as well some of the issues they've been having with docs and, you know, really where are things going there because uh, I guess as, as I had put it, it's, you know, telling somebody that the dock isn't powerful enough to me is not really acceptable. I mean, they spec'd out the dock and they're saying, oh, we'll just plug in the monitor directly to the PC. And I was like, that defeats the purpose of the dock. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and especially since, okay, we had two failures. We've got, I think, I think it's three, maybe four other ones running, no issues. So, yeah. And, that, and, it's, it's, it's and, that, and the one that is so powerful that we were waiting for that I had ordered that was back ordered, my memory is it was supposed to be in middle of August. So that's just about now. So. I'd be interested in, in at least if that has come in to see how, if that's put back on one of the two units that failed of how it works mm -hmm. or does it work or is it the same issue? And the two that, the two that failed were highway and library, right? Yes, correct. Excuse me. Okay, that's good. Uh, at least we have a, a game plan on this. And we're just waiting for someone. It's not, we're not waiting for us to do something, which is, I think we're all concerned about here. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Um, are, you had some, um, well, okay, so before I move off the CARES Act, do we have anything else to talk about there as far as updates go? Or we're just we're good with that one, right? Just a quick uh, on the the phones. Uh, I, I took a look at the uh, the firewall, and uh, it does support Q, uh, QoS. Um, it says here bandwidth priority, max bandwidth, guaranteed bandwidth, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, the TZ four hundred appears to meet that criteria. Yeah, the only thing I want to check on is whether there's additional license costs because i've seen with sonic walls um you know they'll support things like um uh uh filtering you know for for internet sites and stuff if you're running into business and you don't want people on netflix and facebook and stuff like that they'll support it but it'll they'll also charge you 500 dollars for three years of that <laughs> so mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I I don't see anything obvious, but uh, that's a that's a good uh, <laughs> something we should look into. Yeah. Um, I noted that Art. Uh, thank you. Um, back in the phone system, I noted that that you looked it up, and then David, I made a note that David's concerned about the licensing aspect. I'm not trying to be a negative Nelly. I just don't want to get. <laughs> No, that's good. Get on that's the good. ball field and figure out that we're we're going to need to go back to the the well for more money. Right, exactly. Right, and I think okay. Art's going to share some information he got with on. Uh, he was looking up some grant information. Hmm? Yeah, I went back. Uh, can you all see this? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah, uh, I went back three years. I figured that you know it, it wasn't uh, worth going back any further than that. Um, it, I tried to sum, summarize uh, each of the years. I, I, I think we're, one of the uh, things we, we definitely should do and put a grant in for some AI and machine learning for uh, $200,000 like Boston. Only kidding. Um, <clears throat> but you can see uh, some of the uh, um, e-permitting. As I mentioned in my email, we do have that already. We've had it for going on three years. Um, things have changed each year. You can see uh, network infrastructure last year. I think some of that had to do with the uh, um, uh, the towns uh, that got the, uh, the fiber up our way. Um, 
but it's a it's a mix and i just wanted to bring up you know some thoughts or potential thoughts of uh, what we should be uh, <coughs> potentially looking at so if you if you get a minute if you could take take a peek at it um i think that would uh, that would be good uh, one thing I should bring out is uh, it was new to me was Smart 311. That was a new one. I guess that's sort of a, a, a database. Uh, 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 mostly it looked like cities. I saw uh, LA as an example where a citizen can uh, uh, get on this, uh, this app and uh, describe a pothole or some, some issue that uh, uh, is out in the community and it, it gets forwarded to the right people and uh, so on and so forth. Pretty neat system uh, from what I saw, but uh, that was a new one uh, on me. The rest of it was, rest of these are pretty straightforward as you can, you can see. I do have the raw data. Uh, I did send that around also if you, Want to look at that too? This is great. Yeah, yeah really cool. Yeah, and that that is just to uh, reconfirm the the deadline for these applications is between the September fifteenth and October fifteenth. Um, so that is coming up. And from what I've read, basically things that are not eligible would be the typical ongoing maintenance and operations costs or feasibility studies oh. are not not eligible usually at all on most of these grants. Um, I, I was going to do this and I wasn't able to get in the other day, but I think if I can possibly get in, um, they have the online, um, you know, applications. Sometimes you're able to get in and pull it off as a word document. So we can at least see the kinds of questions that they're looking for. And we could even start thinking about how to answer them. I don't know if we have last year's or two years ago, whenever we applied, if we happen to have that application at all to know what we had answered last time, but some of the questions may have changed. Uh, so if I can possibly get in and pull out the um, sort of the draft of the application form itself, I will send that around if I get it before the next meeting. So we can all be looking at that ahead of time and just know what's there. But it certainly sounds like one we should aim to put in an application for. <clears throat> now, is this, these grants can be uh, get to pick one project and go with it, or is it like money yeah. can be split up? Yeah, one, no. project, one, project. Yeah. one project, one project to my understanding. Yep, yes, I mean, that's how that's, the what Art and I ran into. that's what Art and I ran into two years ago. And Art did a great job putting a, together a bunch of needs for us. And our original application was like $58,000. And then they came back and said, well, you can't combine projects. So we ended up getting, I think it was like five or 6,000. Mm -hmm. yeah. How does that, just out of curiosity, how does that apply to things that would require monthly recurring. Like I'm looking, I see like cloud-based products. And obviously with us talking about, you know, Azure for backups or Office 365 or you know, cloud storage of any sort, is it possible to do that and you get the reimbursement for several years in advance? Hmm. I, 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 I interpreted that one, if I remember right. Uh, I believe that was the case, though. I'm not sure how that, would uh, manifest itself that they give you a, you know, a lump of money and then you allocate it, you know, each month. Um, that's a, that's a good question, but definitely there were uh, some uh, uh, 365 like uh, products. Uh, there's only a couple of them, but they were there. Yeah. That, that's what I'm, I'm thinking. If you would take advantage of as much advantage of as much money as possible uh, for this grant, like how would we spend it? You know, I don't think the right choice is to uh, dump it into physical hardware at this point. Um, and, you know, uh, other than, you know, uh, workstation refresh for a lot more people, um, you know, the one that jumps out at me is, is Office 365 and getting things into the cloud. I mean, I mean, I'm very concerned about, you know, cybersecurity and where things are at right now and having physical servers that are behind a flat network and mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I don't know for sure. Um, just as I pulled up something here, if I can just take a second, um, these look like they would be at least part of the content. Um, and I don't know, some, some of these grants have a limit in terms of either the number of words or the number of characters that you answer the question with. So without getting into it online, I can't tell you how much narrative is needed, but there's obviously a purpose statement that's needed, which is um, to describe the, project, the proposed project, what capital asset is needed, the project objectives and the challenges the project would address. Um, benefits is another section. So what are the efficiencies, cost savings, enhanced service delivery, or improved public access to local government services that this would satisfy? Um, identify new costs that would be incurred and how the costs would be paid for, including ongoing operational costs. So this is sort of the cost impact and sustainability one, which is describe how this new initiative would be financially viable for the long term once it's established, and then what would be the, the measures of success? Um, what are the expected measurable improvements? Mm -hmm. So those are basically the, the, that's the kind of stuff that it's wanted, and then obviously a, a budget and a timeline. Um, these projects are supposed to be completed within 18 months of whenever the award is done. Mm -hmm. So that's the timeline. Then we would have to just kind of um, probably put in some milestones on an 18 month calendar type thing of, you know, what it would look like and then uh, put in a project budget. But those are basically, doesn't sound too onerous in terms of the, um, the kinds of stuff they're looking for, but I, I don't know how, how lengthy the narrative can be. Oftentimes it's, it's much shorter than you think. So what we've done is just write everything out in Word and then cut and paste and copy what we can and when you're in online and then sometimes you have to kind of edit it down to make it fit the space they give you. But those are the general things that they're looking for, I think. Well, one of the problems uh, we've run into in the past, I believe, uh, and I, I know the uh, financial folks get uh, pretty upset about it, is, uh, you know, you, you dump a grant in and then, you know, the grant runs out and something like 365, you've got to support that after the grant. And, uh, you know, it's, it's always an issue of uh, now you you know you've got to add to the budget and so on and so forth so that's the only thing i remember you know uh, we've done stuff like that in the past where we've tried to hire you know people and on grants and and then all of a sudden their grant runs out and oops right yeah you gotta let them go so uh, uh, that would be the only problem i could see with a, a 365 type deal and depending on cost and such that, uh, as, as Chris just mentioned, that uh, it has to be, uh, you know, completed in whatever that time frame is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I think in terms of the ongoing costs, I mean, part of the narrative could be like what you've been talking about on various things here about, you know, the cost savings by switching to another tier or another type of technology, what that would do for not only improved efficiency, but cost savings. And so I think you can kind of wrap that around it's not necessarily an added cost it's going to be a swap out cost in some cases with maybe a little bit more in terms of ongoing but you know I, I think it's an argument we could make you know we just have to have pretty clear understanding of what our real costs are now for certain services that we could explain to them how it would you know be cost effective So, a lot to think about here. Hmm. So, for me, what screams out at me is disaster recovery and cybersecurity. Yeah, that's the, that's, that's screaming at me right now on this list. Uh, hack, hack city now. These yeah, it's really like yeah. non at me. Like I'm like, yeah, that'd be nice GIS system. That'd be awesome if you guys had a nice GIS system. It'd be cool if you had a nice management software suite too. But that's all stuff you get after your system is foundationally secure, right? You build the foundation of security, and then you can you can start building stuff on top of that. Yeah. If we put a bunch of stuff in without having any security and not having any way to recover anything that goes wrong. What's the point of building anything? 
So I'm, I'm all about this disaster recovery and cybersecurity thing, just making it just for conversational speaking, you know, I'm just speaking freely here. Um, and you, and you that, can see, you can see, excuse me, like you can see the progression here uh, of yep. you know, 2019, there's, you know, a couple and it's gone up to four and then up to 13 all of a sudden uh, last year. So it's definitely uh, uh, people are getting those grants for the, that type of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that that's really why I brought, you know, getting that, that server into the cloud because then you're putting it behind security that Microsoft owns and is responsible for um, rather than having it, you know, in, in, in town hall here. Um, so I, I think we could almost kill two birds with one stone, but, you know, that to me, that's that's a big one. So. So the trick of that one is how do we wrap it? Because that's what I'm hearing in the past was we've wrapped we've wrapped these up with you know with a couple burritos in the package instead of one burrito. So how do what you know what do we do to get make sure we have we meet the criteria of having the one project so it can't be sliced and diced and we you see what I'm getting at here? The question yeah. I'm asking, I'm asking you poorly. No, no, hundred hundred percent. And to me one of the benefits of moving to the cloud is cybersecurity. You know what I mean? So, you know, if we were to apply just for DR and cybersecurity, what would that look like? And, and is that beneficial if we haven't already secured the infrastructure? You know what I mean? Um, so I almost look at it as that, you know, that cloud service, which provides additional security and, uh layers that you know we don't have and can't maintain uh day to day um but i mean great you know great great question so i'm curious to hear ed and chris's feedback on this since you guys are the ones that are kind of in the trenches daily <laughs> go ed <laughs> No, I, have to, I have no comment to that. So, <laughs> seriously, yeah, though, we kind of need to know what, as a yeah. as a team, we kind of need to know what you guys think your pain is out of these out of these lists here for each year. I mean, where would you identify? Well, I mean, and I guess, uh, Ed can't see the list. I apologize. That right, yeah. that's a big part of the question I'm asking. So, so back on the on the 365, right? The RFP that Joel put together. We haven't done anything with that, right? And did so, we have an idea what that was going to cost? I don't think we ever put it out, right? Yeah, we never, no. we never put it out. But I, I personally have no idea. And maybe David or someone, Megan, has an idea of what that would just ballpark. I don't know. Yeah, I think it was quite a bit. Um, with everything else, I think that's why we tabled it, but I could be wrong. Um, I think, is it in the Google Drive, the shared? I mean, I guess my, my question would be, does it, does it, do we think it would probably fit within the $200,000 envelope? Yes. Um, and, or, oh, you know, yeah. what, what kind of thing would the, the disaster recovery cybersecurity, I mean, do we have a, just a, an idea from your experience, what those systems might cost us to do i mean i i don't know i mean i guess if we're going to do a grant we want to you know make it worthwhile and we've only got one project we can choose so right you you might want to go for the high dollar one but i don't know <laughs> i mean to do it right you're definitely going to spend some money on this um you know you're going to have recovery you're going to have recovery at the local level in some fashion and you're going to have recovery um, the cybersecurity piece, like Dave, David was saying, you're going to have a beefed up firewall and more secure everything in the, in the, in the town. We're talking physical security too. I mean, um, I don't know if that could, that's how the, how you guys feel about physical security, but, um, I don't think we have too many threats around this area, but I'm all, my brain is always like, I, I work behind a giant fence and stuff. So I'm always like thinking about things that most people don't care about. Sorry about that. Yeah. 
Well, and I think the only other one that I've heard a lot about, and I know Ed, you've talked about it a bit too, is a different kind of financial software for payroll and accounting, right? And, but again, I don't have a clue whether we're talking a $10,000 investment or a $100,000 investment. Oh, you're probably talking about 35 to 40 because a good portion of that cost is the conversion cost. Mm -hmm. even, if you, even if you stay with the same, shall we say, software provider and upgrade it. But if we so wanted to change, cheap. but if we wanted to change software altogether, right? Isn't that what you were talking about maybe? Or? Well, my, my, my suggestion, I believe the company we already have uh, has what we need, but it's just in a newer version rather than converting to a different manufacturer or provider. Oh yeah, you had listed this last week or last meeting the financial software as a possible target for the money. Right. And I'm not saying that's not a viable thing. I yeah. just think that, you know, we, we, we build our bricks from the bottom up and, and I think we have some bigger low hanging fruit here that needs to be addressed mm -hmm. personally. And it's, I, I'm not telling anyone what to do. Um, right. And, and, and I look at it from a different point of view is I believe that we can have, we can get cost efficiencies and save manpower by upgrading the financial software, uh, you know, but in any of them, there are all different perspectives. I say we list out four or five, you know, anywhere from three to five, figure out the best we can what those actual costs are and what the benefits are. And we go for basically what we think we're going to get the biggest bang for and, you know, bang for the buck and the most productivity out of or the biggest benefit out of. Well, I'm going to vote for one of them, be disaster recovery and cybersecurity, be one of our four. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else can pick whatever they want. <laughs> me, me too. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll third that. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think I think it would be good if, if we could say maybe just take three and then if I send around these this thing that I just mentioned here, these sort of the benefits and the you know, the purpose, the benefits, and you know, we could just jot down some points, you know, for the next meeting and then you know, we could have the little the disaster recovery cyber security people that you know, maybe there's two of you that want to work on that and then two people that want to work on something else and just do a little brainstorming, you know, before and putting it down on paper before the next meeting. And then we'd have something to discuss and figure out which one would make the most sense to apply for. I mean, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, think, I think that's a great idea. I mean, I think even if it, w if it wasn't for these grants, I think for us to kind of put our heads around what are the components that would go into any of these things if we were to invest in them, what are the yeah. benefits that come out the other side, I think is a valuable exercise anyways. Uh, Absolutely, I concur. Okay. My my only concern is, uh, you know, it goes back to what I think we touch on almost every every meeting here is, the more complex systems we put in, the more we need somebody to run them. So we can yeah. redo all the firewalls and the switches, and you know, have a complete DMZ and you know, like have all this complex stuff. But if we don't have somebody that's going to maintain it, keep things updated. You know, you'll, you'll see vulnerabilities pop up with firmware for firewalls. You'll see all sorts of other things. So we need to make sure that we're thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a great point because we, you know, I think about that a lot, how the town has no IT support and has no really, maybe they do, but like in my mind, there's really not a real IT support channel. So could we lump? something that in with you know something like that in with disaster recovery and cybersecurity to get some sort of contract in um to have that personnel there you know to to keep track of this stuff because we definitely need as we as you said david as we build up we definitely need to be able to support this you know every company's got an it department that's there to support their users and we kind of need that same flavor here um, whether it's one, just one person running the shop, you know, yeah. or it's a, whether it's, it's a supplied vendor that's performing the service for us. Um, we kind of need that for the users in the town. Yeah. 
someone's there to administer everybody's PCs and, you know, to have a, a plan of updating things. And like you said, patching stuff, you know, like it's, that's gotta be done. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, what was the last time we checked to see if the server that's there, the file server that's there is, is fully patched, it's connected, it's online. Yeah, exactly. Could be all sorts of security vulnerabilities on that guy. Um, so I, I think we should put our best people on. We should pick pick a couple like Art. I mean, uh, Ed, if you wanted to, you know, pick a couple others besides disaster recovery and cybersecurity, and we can we can put our best people on the team on whatever you pick. Um, and we can, like you said, like Chris said, we can divvy up. Um, and try to come up with a sort of a skeleton uh, outline of a for, of a grant for each one of those topics, and try to come up with some measurable key performance indicators for how we can come out smiling on the other side, and how much better our lives are going to be. It's going to be pretty. That's going to be the easy piece. <laughs> yeah, I think. yeah, for sure. So if if you had the disaster recovery cybersecurity topic, and then maybe the the um the financial software one and then the third one is the 365 or i think the 365 one would kind of have to be rolled in somehow disguised if you will under the second bullet disaster recovery and cybersecurity yeah. a cloud-based product or something like that yeah yeah it's i'd say let's be... break out let's break out cloud-based product to be you know those microsoft offerings and try to combine the the web host, um, sorry, not the web hosting, but the, the cloud hosted storage as a component of that. Um, I think that would be easier to combine as one. Um, and it would have some benefits that I think will overlap with some of the other areas. I think it would be tough to pull it into cyber in cybersecurity if we're talking hardware and software, they're gonna, somebody will throw a flag and just say, that's clearly two separate things. Okay. Mm -hmm. At least that's my thought. I, I I agree. You're right. I think so. That's I think that's a good point. And um, I, I, like I said before, I want to keep everything separate so we don't get in the same pickle we were before with having more than one project represented. Um, so it's smart to split them up the best we can and categorize them the best we can. Um, so cloud based cloud based products would accompany the three sixty five stuff. Um, who wants to do we want volunteers for that now or do you want you want to do this offline like I'll send an email out because so, not not everybody's here right now so I not everybody's kinda, here yeah and I don't really know everybody's yeah. like uh, you know it's nice to have people working on stuff they enjoy yeah so um, that'd be good I'll send an email I'll out and see if we can get I'll take care of the financial software piece I, yeah, I was going to suggest that you would ha probably have to take that one, Ed, because none of us know it, and it'd be hard for us to try to quantify the cost measures and all that and the savings when we don't really know any much about it. So I think we'll probably have a better idea with the cloud-based stuff and the disaster recovery. Okay. So I'll send out an email yep. to the group uh, looking for teams, subgroups to come up with um, yep. skeleton Yep. skeleton uh plans mm -hmm. and i'll send around the the questions of those four or five categories okay okay so wait for that yep. from you chris and then yep. once we have that i'll send those out and try to get uh break those up into teams um anyway i'll, I'll figure out how to do that and then we're going to borrow everyone with that this Great. is this is really really good stuff i'm really really i'm really um motivated to get as much money as we can in this space um and any other sort of grant opportunities we can get our, get our hands on we need so much money it's not even funny <laughs> so we gotta rob a bank or something that's why i need so much money <laughs> we never do that but we have to get money somehow and uh we have a lot of holes to patch So let's see what else we're talking about here today. Any other discussion on the grants? I think we had a pretty good uh, 
back and forth on that. And we have good action items, so. I had nothing else on the agenda tonight. Is there any other business? That's what I've got. I do have one question, but. Oh, we should swear. Uh, do we have enough? We can vote Megan in too, right? You don't have to vote her in. She, she yeah. should, should have gotten emailed her uh, appointment slip today, so she'll just have to make an appointment to go in and see the town clerk and be sworn in. Oh, okay. I did today. So we're, there's nothing we need to do with Megan. She's an official yeah, member no. now, right? Yeah, she already swore in today. Yep. What, what, once she's sworn in, she'll be official member. She, she, did, she did today, Ed. Oh, okay. I thought she meant she just got it. She did receive that appointment slip today. So she's an official member? Yeah. I, I called the town clerk right away. So <laughs> she's like, I waited long enough. <laughs> well, you're, not, you're um, not all that far away from the town hall either while you're working. That's for sure. I actually spun around the bookstore and just went back onto Route 10. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Um, for the grant writer, um, is uh, Diana still writing grants for us? She's she's part of the grant committee with uh, Ed and myself and Kate Rooks. So okay. the four of us are working on a variety of, of grants. So okay. Okay. probably Ed would have the, the magical um, codes to get in on some of these state grants. Um, but it, it just depends. Sometimes we have to do it through his computer or sometimes I can do it with a different sign in. Um, but the, the basic thing will be to have all you guys provide the innards of what we need to, to put in it. And, you know, we can cut and paste and put it in the right format to get it online and, you know, by the deadline, but um, it's, it's your guys expertise that really help. Yeah. You know, we can, we can wordsmith it, but I mean, the basics, <laughs> we, we probably don't have that, that information. So. All right. So feel free, everyone, once we break up into our groups that work, you know, don't wait for the next meeting, work amongst yourselves and try to get as much done as you can. Um, <laughs> Cause I'm, I'm feeling the pressure here on this one. Yep. O October 15th isn't far away. Right. And they'll put out the call and open up the, the online site as of September 15th, I believe. So, um, right. Right. Yeah. So, it, so, it, so at that point at September 15th, we'll definitely know exactly the format and exactly how we need to submit everything. Cause we right. can go in there and take a look at every, all the forms. I think so. Yep. Okay. Great. It's, That's it's awesome. Not, it's, it's not a super difficult application. Yeah. If I did it last night, but if I can do it, it's not difficult. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, some of the, uh, you know, they have guidance. Yeah, Megan, it, it, there is a thing on how to apply online, but they won't let you, at least of last week, they didn't let you get into it um, because it wasn't active yet. But, but yeah, that's where we would apply. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay, great. That's awesome. Okay, so I think that's, uh, anybody else have any other new business? And no, I think just, just following up a little bit, I know uh, we kind of talked a bit about the, the rescue plan funds and the future broadband ideas for town. Um, and I know you wanted to kind of put that aside and focus on the immediate projects. But just to say that we're going to, um, from Select Board's point of view, we're going to reach out to Charter and get a, uh, it's going to talk to them and get a sort of a mapping or whatever they can provide us that shows us where the broadband coverage is around town and where it's severely lacking. So we have a, a sense of how good or how bad things are and what, what parts of town in terms of, uh, you know, internet access. So that can get us thinking on something anyway uh, toward that because those will be, that's that's money that's already going to be in hand. We don't even have to apply for it. So we've got to figure out how we can access some of it with reasonable ideas anyway. So hmm. we'll be working on that before the next meeting too. Awesome. Okay. And I Kim, Kim mentioned that um, Whip City was willing to come talk to our committee. I'm guessing that's about um, like the municipality thing. Probably, yeah. Pair partnering up with them. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, I, I wanted to mention that I, I've met with um, East Hampton Media, the folks um, there. I, I went to their facility and sat down with them and met Jen and her, her team. And um, they, uh, they're, they're doing a lot of great things. And um, they would, they're just looking to be a little bit more integrated into the, um, the Southampton end of, end of things, whether it's the select board or whatever, they, they feel like, um, they just want to have a, a tighter relationship. So I'm hoping I can help bridge, you know, their needs with, with, with the town's needs and, uh, get everybody nice and cozy, um, because they're very, they're definitely here to serve Southampton. Well, they're definitely filming select board every Tuesday night and they're doing school committee right now. So <laughs> yeah, they do a great job. There's only two, two of those guys covering all those events and they do all the editing and uploading. And, uh, um, so it'd be very, really, really nice if we could, uh, uh, have, have Jen, um, either come to one of our meetings or, um, have, um, have uh, East Hampton Media meet with the select board sometime, like their uh, executive director. They have so, so already. When was that? Erica came in about, what, a month ago, Ed? Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing about a month ago. Okay, good. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, no, we've, we've got a good relationship. As far as I know, we have a good relationship with them at select board level. Yeah. it's They just not, upgraded our equipment in town hall. So. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. I saw all the that, studio that's equipment. That's only because you've been, only been on two years, Chris. Yeah, right. There, there's, a, there's, a cult, there's a cultural history there that true. the members have been around a longer time. Yeah. Uh, right. It's there. Yeah. 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 So I, I think I've, that, I've, I've, I've noticed it. Yeah. So I think that's kind of really the bottom line is, um, is they kind of want a fresh start. And, and um, so I'm hoping I can help with that in some, any way I can. And uh, mm -hmm. I just Great. wanted to mention it to Ed and Chris because um, they'll, We'll probably have more discussion with those folks um, about other sure. things because they they've got a fiber connection. That I'm sure we can leverage in some way or another. It's just whether the whether the the license will allow it. That's what I'm trying to dig into right now. There's a fiber. David and I saw with our own eyes in art. There's a fiber connection right in that basement that comes from the North School, and um, it's mm -hmm. if we if we have the the ability license wise to get access to it, we can. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's part of what Kim had been talking about at one point too, and that's why we have to have a meeting when we can get Kim in here too. So, yeah, yeah, you know, and so, actually, you might just to to pile on that a little bit. Um, Chris Sorensen from Valley actually called that out. Um, he said, "A, you know, they've got um, their system in about 15 towns. None of them have any issues as long as we have decent internet connection." I kind of chuckled. <laughs> And he said, if the internet is not stable, we can talk about leveraging the MBI fiber connection. So he must know something about that, maybe working with Kim or something, and has some well, idea on how to do that. I, I believe that Valley is a licensed end provider off the middle mile that okay. we could that we could buy internet services from. So basically, the state built the middle mile. Uh, then they, shall we say, sold those rights to hmm. now a company that was not a business, but basically that company that, uh, shall we say, assumed the proprietary rights of that middle mile from the state to utilize it, then basically went out and uh, sell to certain end providers, you know, X amount of use on it. They turn around and they they sell that they sell that to uh, you know the towns that you know X dollars per ten megabytes of uh, you know internet service. So hmm. okay. I'm I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure Valley is one of those end providers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, back on Kim's point, do we want to have Whip City come and talk to the committee or not? I mean, if so, we should schedule that for some time. Yes, I, you, can, I, you can do that. And, and if and if I rem remember tomorrow, what I'll do is, uh, I've got that link to uh, 
I think the presentation that they did to the select board, I can send that all, uh, out to all the members of the committee and they can uh, look at that and get a little bit of an idea what they presented to us, you know, a year and a half or two years ago. Mm -hmm. just, just, just as a starting point. Yep. Okay. And the last thing I wanted, I mean, I meant to bring it up in the last meeting and I forgot. Um, I still want to get together with the department heads, um, you know, our committee, whether it's myself or myself and David or anybody else that wants to come. I still like to do that. Um, so I just want to throw that out there. If, I don't know if you guys can help with that, setting that up or not, but I'm willing to meet anyone that wants to talk to us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Probably be better uh, as we get into September. A lot of vacations and stuff going on right now. So the, yeah. let's just say the attendance at the department head meetings has been low. That's fine. I just want to throw it out again because it kind of we mentioned it and then we went a couple of meetings without talking about it. And I just want to let you guys know that I'm totally on board, yep. um, you know, having those meetings. And do you, sure. do you want to wait, Mike, until we have the second round of things installed or, you know, with more people, more users being available or? Yeah, I think that'd be that'd be good. Um, you know, uh, one of the things we were trying to do is get feedback from the users in these, you know, right. who, these folks were using these computers and it'd be nice if everyone actually had them. So yeah, that's so just something <laughs> we can break the ice in the conversation with, Hey, how's your equipment working out? You know, and yeah. that's just a nice way to talk about things. And then we can actually, they can start venting on what they want to vent about, or at least tell us, you know, what yeah. they feel are things that they'd like to be addressed. And um, we can go, go from yeah. there i think that's that's probably better because otherwise they'd be venting on why they don't have their computer yet so yeah um you know to the extent that we can get wally to give us some dates and get this thing done um that should be a priority i think and i know ed's got that on his list so okay all right so that's all i had that was the last thing on my notes to talk about i'll open it up one more time for anyone else to talk about anything they want Thank you for having me on the committee officially now. Welcome. Uh, it's our pleasure. <laughs> nice to have you. Thanks for volunteering, Megan. Of course. Happy to be back on town stuff officially. <laughs> okay. So uh, with Megan um, now on the group, um, I guess I'll uh, ask for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So moved. Yeah. All right. Very good. We will uh, pick up, I'll send out everyone's, I'll send out the meeting minutes via email this time before the meeting, I was just so swamped. Um, but I'll get them out before the meeting this time so everyone has a chance to look at them. All right, thanks everyone. Good night folks. Great night. All right, have, have a good one. Thank you everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.